and here is Ken, who comes to my office with some specific requests, as adults often do. First, he wants to improve his mild aesthetics. Second, he reports some vague masticatory difficulties. Third, he wants to reduce his chin height. These are the patient's requests, and the success of the therapy depends largely on meeting them. If you can't do something, just tell the patient. He'll evaluate the alternatives and, if needed, change his expectations. Here, I explain him there is no problem with the first two requests, but for the third one, he would need surgery. As expected, he quickly forgets about the last request, and he focuses on the first two. When performing the intraoral inspection, we find a dental third class, a crossbite of 12 and 22, which is often associated with an elongated mandible, and negative overjet. The case is completed by a tendency for open bite, noted even by the patient, who initially wanted to decrease his chin height. The cephalometric study shows a A and B angle value of zero, which is normal or borderline. But as you know, the A and B angular value doesn't always tell us the truth about intermaxillary relations. In fact, different inclinations of the mandibular plane can increase or decrease its value. A more reliable diagnostic index is the Witz index, which correlates A and B positions with the mandibular plane itself. In this case, the Witz measures minus 8 mm, unveiling a full skeletal class 3. Ken was asked to wear elastics from the beginning of the treatment. Light early elastics, usually 2 ounces, help compensate the sagittal problem more efficiently. Ken's tendency for open bite shows during the resolution of the anterior crowding by incisal proclination, which also tends to open up the bite. In these cases, I usually do not bond the lower septum, which may open the bite up a bit more, but I do bond the upper septum, which help to enlarge the upper arch. I also bond 12 and 22 upside down because I will need to recover the root torque after alignment, as their crown will be pushed forward, but the root will tend to remain palatal. After a few months, the class 3 has slightly worsened due to the mild decompensation we usually get while aligning and leveling. But, for sure, it would have been much worse without early elastics. I then put in place a 14 by 25 Q9 tie in the upper arch, which starts to recover the lateral incisor root torque, and a 018 Australian wire in the lower arch. This round sectional wire will not give any positive torque to the lower incisors, an undesirable effect in cases like this one. Furthermore, on this wire, I can also easily make a band bag which keeps the incisors away from any proclination. At this point, you can see how we go on with third-class elastics during daytime, but at night, we ask the patient to wear open bite elastics to close the bite, going all around the upper and lower cuspids. At this point, the elastics can be a bit heavier, such as 4 ounces. Once the bite has closed and the third class is solved, we ask the patient to wear third class intercuspidation elastics, which have a class 3 vector and an open bite vector to prevent class 3 and open bite from relapsing while finishing the case. Once the bite has settled, we put a 19 by 25 double S on the upper arch for 10 weeks to finalize the uprighting of 12 and 22. 
in such situations, make sure to put a power chain to prevent undesirable space openings due to the torquing effect on the teeth. The overjet improvement lead to the solution of the upper laterals cross bite. We achieved this result by applying class 3 early elastics, which have a positive torquing effect on the upper incisors and a negative torquing effect on the lower ones. The 018 stainless steel Australian wire in the lower arch has exactly this function. It lets the lower incisors lose torque while maintaining the alignment. The final photograph shows us a complete alignment and the recovery of the two upper laterals, as well as a correct overbite. The retention phase starts now and lasts forever. I usually put a splint from premolar to premolar in the lower arch and a removable retainer in the upper arch. We might not have reduced his chin height and doubts remain on whether we improve his masticatory function, but that's for sure, the patient's happy because of his new smile.